All right. Hello and um, welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Myrtle Beach in, I forgot, I knew I was going to get it wrong, South Carolina, North Carolina, you South got- Carolina. Yeah. I should never doubt myself. Um, Mandy Podlesny, how are you doing, Mandy? Good. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And Mandy is a certified keto coach and uh, she's helped thousands of people uh, achieve their goals. And what I wanted to talk about today is because yeah, I, I don't know that much about keto, but I do know that I think more and more people nowadays are understanding the mind-body connection and the fact that, uh, you know, having a healthy body and, and a healthy mind go hand in hand. So regardless of what your role is, what your job is and your life is, uh, making sure that you have the healthiest body possible is uh, is going to help you particularly through this, you know, like times we've been through where there's a lot of mental stress as well. Yeah, you nailed it. Exactly. Um, I love that you said the mind body connection, because that's super important to definitely focus on. <laughs> so, um, so let's, let's just start off here. Um, so what got you into, well, first of all, explain keto to the to the ill informed like myself, and then explain why you got into it. Yeah, so simply put, we are either a sugar burner or a fat burner. When you go into ketosis, your body starts to produce things called ketones. And the way that you go into ketosis is by reducing your carb and sugar intake, um, significantly reduce like 20 grams or less of uh, carbohydrates. And then you have to deplete your body of that. And then your body will start to produce these things called ketones. Um, And then it's really, really therapeutic when you have ketones in your system for energy focus, fat loss, muscle preservation. And in my case, anti-inflammatory properties is why I started to explore that diet um, and way of healing. Yeah. So, um, so when you chose this, I mean, first of all, uh, what changes did you have to make in 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 your diet and in your life? Because let's face it, I mean, people often do, you know, they they do diets, right? So they go, oh, I'll do the keto diet, or I'll do this one, or whatever, and they always overlook the fact that it's not really it's lifestyle, it's lifestyle changes, right? At the end of the day, that you have to make, not just temporary uh, reductions and things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, with a very short conversation with us, so I don't want to cover all of it, um, Mm -hmm. but I was challenged for about 15 years, um, misdiagnosed and um, joint replacement surgeries and a whole bunch of, uh, we can go down a rabbit hole of that some other day. But um, yeah, I had significant health challenges at a very young age. And I tried for that long to really mitigate my health challenges. Um, and then once I found the power of ketosis and getting my body into ketosis, I knew that that was like a really great avenue. And listen, I keto and burrito, I have tools and strategies in order for you to get into ketosis quickly, easily. Um, we have supplements now that I represent as well to do kind of like the cheat code into ketosis, but it really is not just drinking a product or, you know, just doing a diet. There's so many other avenues that are, are um, required uh, in order to really whole holistically heal. So, so then, um, what is the role of a keto coach? So, what I really don't identify much as like a keto coach so much as I do more of an empowered eating coach because I really want to get people results and really work on the lifestyle changes. And ultimately, yes, we should be eating a diet of meat, veggies, healthy fats, which is essentially the keto diet anyway. Um, but it really ultimately comes down to the other five pillar, four pillars, nutrition, movement, self-care, sleep, hydration. And that is what I teach. And that is what I want to empower people to actually start executing and being mindful of those choices, because that will get you results over time. Intensity tells a great story, but consistency over time is what's going to get you results. Yeah, no, that's a, that's, that's a great way of putting it. And I think sometimes people overlook uh when if they maybe do have a problem with food or with the choices they're making or with the the intake i think people sometimes overlook how difficult it is because um uh in having some personal connection with uh, somebody who's had eating disorder written about it is that uh 
if you're a drug addict or, a, or an alcoholic or something, you can actually remove these things from your life. You can't remove food from your life. It's there. So you have to develop a new relationship with it. Absolutely. Yeah. The relationship with food is one of the fundamental things I teach. And it takes a lot more energy to muster up the willpower and the desire and actual commitment it takes to execute a diet than it does to actually make small incremental mindful changes um, every single day. And that's really just breaking that old diet paradigm of we have to do a diet and we have to take these products and we have to like do it for a long period of time. Like, doesn't that sound just even saying it exhausting? <laughs> like, <laughs> just, um, you know, do what's best for us and, you know, eat clean, real foods, move our bodies, drink water, practice self-care, manage, manage our stress um, and get good sleep. And that's super important. Yeah. And I think the other thing, uh, Mandy, is I, I think uh, people are so bombarded and overwhelmed because they're getting nowadays because they're getting all these different things coming at them and they don't know, oh, what should I choose? And there's lots of promises being made. And let's face it, we live in a we live in a shortcut culture today where people just go on Instagram and they say, oh, look, uh, for 75 bucks, I can transform my life. Click here. Uh, so. So how, how when, you, when you work or when you advise people, I mean, you've got to give them the real deal, right? And the fact is that these things are lifestyle choice changes and you have to, you know, commit to them. But as you say, it, it can be done incrementally. And every, as we know, every thousand mile journey starts with one step. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually fundamentally teach, you know, setting standards, your minimum standards, no matter what's going on around you, hell or high water, you know, chaos, dogs barking, mad at the husband, Susie from accounting's making you mad at work. Like it does not matter. You're going to drink that water. You're going to make a good choice. You are going to check your emotions. So you've, I actually have a worksheet where you just go through the questions and you set your standards for the week. We're not going to go say, Oh, it sounds it, it's, we're not going to go on, go to the gym. I'm going to, I promise myself, I'm going to go to the gym seven days a week. Okay. Listen, Linda, it sounds really nice, but you don't even have gym shoes or a gym membership. So let's dial yeah. it back a little bit and figure out where we're at and meet people where they're at to make those choices versus doing what sounds nice or what we think we should be doing. Yeah, no, it, it, that's a great point. Uh, some years back, I interviewed this, this gentleman uh, who he was, uh, he had been very out of shape, overweight, all of those things. And he just got this idea into his head. He got sick of being, he got a, this idea into his head that he wanted to run a marathon. Right? I mean, and he said himself at the time, I mean, he could barely make it to the fridge and back, you know? So what he did was, it's literally, so he did, what he did was he started off on his first day, he walked for five minutes. That's it. And the second day he walked for like six or seven minutes, whatever. And now he's completed, I don't know how many different marathons, but it just, to your point, I think that's the thing is sometimes we get so fixated on the destination and because the destination isn't coming fast enough, we, we forget about, we, we, we forget to enjoy the journey. Yeah. And how many people go through weight loss surgery or sleeves or things like that. And then they actually do get the body composition or do lose the weight. And then they either become to certain things or they actually, you know, they don't change any lifestyle. They don't change any part of their lifestyle. The habits are still there. The emotional toll is still there. So getting to the root of like all of that is what I'm an expert at because the diet is only one small component of it. It's really on that mind stuff and not being, I am a, I am price line negotiator of myself. I know all the tips and tricks, how to talk myself out of and justify myself out of something. So I know the strategies, what I have to implement in order for me to execute. And then I just really work with other people on what their negotiations are and work yeah. for, you know, come to a good deal, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, because it's, uh, let's face it, I mean, we're fantastic, aren't we? We're fantastic at giving ourselves uh, get out of jail cards. We're fantastic at coming up with reasons to procrastinate or or excuses. And we're great at excuses. Let's say we're very forgiving to ourselves sometimes, aren't we? Yeah, we're forgiving and we're also very critical, which is yeah. kind of funny the duality there, you know, it's like, we want to be committed to our change, but we have these crazy stories. We're not really willing to rewrite. So, you know, really just being empowered to face those and be like, okay, like what's the real deal? What's going on? You know? And oftentimes I get on the phone with people and they're like, tell me about how much protein I should eat. I'm like, 
how about I tell you, or how about I ask you a whole bunch of questions on what's going on and why you want to know about protein and what the outcome is there. And then we get to the real stuff and it's actually like magical, but kind of sad when we unpack those. And then that's when the real healing and work actually begins and the progress and stuff starts to happen. So what are some of the things that you uncover with people? Because I think it would be interesting for people to understand like that everything, everything has something underlying. There's something in our, in our brains There's something from our past. There's a lot of whatever. There's a lot of different factors that come into play that build our relationship with, with the, you know, our physical body, with our mental state, with the world around us. What are some of the things that you uncover when you talk to people? Um, oh, wow. I mean, it really is individual, like really just getting into like what's really going on. But a lot of the excuses that I hear, it's something that I love solving the problem. I can't because, um, I do, I do free clarity calls, um, to figure, help you figure that out. Um, and ultimately what a lot of, I, what the conversation starts is like, let's just use social settings. For example, well, I can't fix it. I can't stick to a diet because I'm going to be social. Well, is that actually really what's going on? Or you're just unafraid, you're just very afraid to actually communicate with the people in your life that you want to make changes that you want to actually, you know, heal and do the health and wellness and really like focus on that. And you're just uncomfortable having that conversation, or maybe you're actually not really quite there ready to make those changes. So we create this whole story of like why we can't to make ourselves feel better as to why we're not. Yeah, no, exactly. It's, well, it's like, remember the old days, it's the people who quit smoking. Well, I'm going to quit it next week. Or I'm looking forward to this is going to be my last cigarette ever. Yeah, until the next one. Uh, <laughs> but but your thing about it is, yes, you can't, you have to be ready, you have to be ready to to make these changes. But you touched on something interesting there. Uh, also is the fact that it's not just about the person themselves, right? It's about those surrounding them. And sometimes that can be a, a an even more difficult uh, challenge for people because maybe maybe there's people around you like the like like you and like the life they have right now the way it is uh, maybe they they don't want to make the change maybe it all sounds too hard maybe you're maybe by you making changes in your life you're holding up a mirror and they don't want to look in that mirror this kind of thing so how do you help people negotiate those around them it's really about communication really. And then reverse engineering the communication. It's like, we're so reactionary, right? Like, oh, well, one little piece of pizza is not going to hurt or, oh, come on girl. Like just have a drink or just stay or whatever. And it's like you being in your personal power and really learning and understanding what that actually means. So you can make a practical non-reactionary decision and have a non-reactionary conversation from a neutral standpoint, not an emotional one. Right. So somebody saying to me like over and over again, Oh, well, a little piece is not going to hurt. Okay. Well, I love you. Thank you so much for encouraging me to like, kind of do the thing, but I'm really committed to my health and wellness right now. Are you open to supporting me on this journey and really letting me not have the pizza and supporting me on, you know, a better choice. If that works for you, I would really appreciate it. If not, then we're, we might have to set a boundary or separate for a little while, you know, <laughs> like that's kind of like yeah. the tough conversations we don't really want to have, but like, it's not this magical science, like everyone wants the gimmick or the pill or something, but it's actually about communication and mindset. That's fundamental. Yeah, and it is. I mean, that is the hard part of, of any of any change that you undertake is uh, that you do have to re-examine the, you know, the, the universe that surrounds you, the people within your orbit. And sometimes as sometimes those people will be super supportive, sometimes they won't be. And sometimes you have to, as you said, you have to make those decisions about whether you keep those people in your life or maybe you keep them at an arm's length. Or and the bigger question, I think, sometimes is you have to ask, what purpose are they serving? Because yeah. sometimes that person who you say, oh, well, they're they're really negative and they make me feel like that and all of that. You've got to say, OK, but you keep them around. So what purpose are they serving some purpose for you because you're keeping them around? Yeah. Is the purpose safety? Is the purpose purpose comfortability or is this a purpose? Is this person being shown in your life because it's a, an assignment to which you need to handle and you know it's uncomfortable but those are all things that contribute to 
our diet changes and wellness and lifestyle. And there are uncomfortable conversations, but no growth comes from comfort zones ever. <laughs> Oh, very true, very true. Um, and so when somebody starts a, a journey with you, what are some of the changes that they can expect? Uh, I mean, I mean, as we know, it takes over time, but what are some of the things that they maybe will start to notice, um, you know, relatively quickly? Um, I, well, I really work on like ditching the diet drama, like all of this stuff that we've been talking about for the last like little bit, it's like, this is the diet drama that we go through. So navigating that is the first step, then really fixing their relationship with food. Like where do they self soothe with food? How do they not manage stress? Um, you know, developing and really setting the standards for what food they're going to choose all the other lifestyle pillars as well. And then really learn to love themselves and re-remind themselves that they are a powerful person and they are really capable of doing this. But we get so lost in the minutia of how should we, how can I, what's going, like, what's the next best thing? Maybe this will work for me. Well, the only thing that will work is the one you're willing to do. So let's create a plan around it and then build that confidence and everything else in their life actually starts to change. Yeah, that's uh, that's perfectly put. Is uh, you you can have all of these different systems and new fads or whatever, but I mean the only one, that, as you said, the only one that's going to work for you is the one that you actually that you actually commit to. So I guess then, I mean that's part of the that's part of the foundation that people have to sort of establish with themselves. Like, am I really prepared? Am I really prepared to see this through? Yep. I only work with people that are like eight to 10 out of 10 ready to go, you know? And I like, even before, like even making an offer or saying like, Hey, I know I can help you. I really want to make sure that they're driving with me. Cause I am the direct person. I will say the thing to you that you might not want to hear. So I always make sure I get a buy-in and a commitment level there. That is somebody that's really ready. And sometimes they're not. And sometimes I trigger people that aren't really ready and then six months later they come back and they're like hey i'm ready now i'm sorry i ghosted you or whatever i don't take <laughs> anything for me i went through my own journey and i still go on healing journeys and you know things in my business or entrepreneur life and you know just anything all of these principles are not only just applicable to diets and wellness mm -hmm. but like anything mindset and stuff like that for you to have a whole happy healthy life and you should hear me with my coaches sometimes i'm like eh, why can't i do this and then i need to kick in the ass at, you know and <laughs> we all just get it when we need it and right right at the perfect time yeah absolutely and i think uh, what you just also outlined there is the power of coaching uh, because let's face it, as we talked about the people who surround us, sometimes they may be giving us fantastic advice, but we're never going to take it because it's coming from them. And because we get defensive and we just think, OK, yeah, yeah, there's, I know there's something else behind it. You're criticizing me for a different reason. But when you work with a coach, I mean, it's fantastic because you have this third party person who only who has who has no investment in your life other than working with you to make the best life possible. And therefore it becomes much easier for you to take the direct feedback from, from this person who is just working on your behalf, as opposed to maybe these well-meaning people around you who, who you just unfortunately laden, you lay all this baggage on top. So anything they say to you comes with some baggage. Yeah, definitely. And then working with a coach collapses time because then it gives you the perspective. Like if you want to go somewhere, follow somebody that's already been there, you know, they've already cleared the path for you. So it's like, if you want to collapse time and get to where you need to go, then hire somebody that is going in the direction or has been in the direction that you want to go to. Um, but that also requires time, energy, effort, and financial commitment in that partnership. Right. Um, and find somebody that works for you, but also understand that too, like calibrating to the person that you would like to aspire to be is very, very important, but you also do have the answers inside of you. Um, but if you really want to get, well, what happens is we have these answers inside of us, but we have to have somebody pull them out. So if you want to pull them out faster, hire someone that can, you know, see things from a different objective outside of your own brain. I can't tell you how many times I've hired coaches and, you know, collapse so much time because I just was spinning my wheels. And my only regret there is like, oh man, I should have hired you sooner to get you out of, get you in my head and out of my own head. And so I'm able to execute. So yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and obviously a starting a journey like this, particularly, I mean, if it's, 
it, it can be quite daunting to some people. I think having a, having a coach along the way is is a, is um, an ideal way to, way to go because it's tough. And anyway. I mean, with anything in life, it's tough to try and do it yourself and self educate and all of that kind of thing. So I think, and especially because what, as you said, what we're talking about is, and we're not talking about just putting a new diet together we're talking about making major lifestyle changes and getting your body and your mind and body in sync absolutely yep yep and navigating the the messiness in between the mind yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then how do you one last question then when you're when you work with, how do you help people who maybe hit a speed bump because let's face it i mean that's i'm sure it's inevitable everybody does we all hit it, despite our best intentions and our commitment to things we'll always hit some speed bumps along the way how do you help people not let that speed bump turn into an obstacle or turn the car around and drive home <laughs> um, I mean, what's the speed bump? We figure that out first, right? Like what is really there? Is that an actual speed bump or are you perceiving it to be one? Um, or is this something that can be again, like a reflection or an assignment to navigate? Um, and then really understanding and kind of just navigating through like the expectation of what a timeline is, um, because you know, your body's going to do its own thing. You and so often people jump on the scale and then they self-sabotage because they don't get the result that they want because they wanted it yesterday. Um, so kind of navigating that mindset is crucial. Um, and then really understanding that we're going to weigh our efforts and we're not going to weigh ourselves. <laughs> yeah, very, very good. Well put. Yeah. As, uh, as somebody used to say, um, the person I'm referring to with the eating disorder author and that is it's all about progress, not perfection. Yes, yes. Don't mess good enough up for perfect, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, thanks very much, Mandy. This has been fascinating. Uh, I'm sure people learned a lot from this. I know I did. Uh, all of Mandy's information is going to be below this video uh, with links. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your business. Yeah, so I help people ditch the diet drama, fix their relationship with food, and learn to love themselves confidently, even naked. Um, you can go to mandyp.com for my website and all of that information. And then my Instagram is at more Mandy P and then my keto club, but you can keto burrito. My ultimate goal is for you to be a better version of yourselves and be better than where I found you. Um, and you can go to keto club with mandy.com for the link to my Facebook community. Fantastic. Listen, thanks again, Mandy. And thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.